um. Está aqui. Ah, já, estamos, já estamos live no Instagram, já estamos aqui em direto. Deixa eu só mudar aqui a, a luz, a luz estava deslocada. Então, já tenho aqui um bocadinho mais de luz no Instagram também, espetacular. Olá, muito boa noite a quem, entretanto, vai entrando e nos acompanhando. E também já estamos live aqui no Facebook. Um, para quem acompanha as outras Greenlight Other Choice, estas conversas ao vivo neste meio digital, Uh, hoje está a estranhar que eu estou a olhar para aqui e depois estou a olhar para aqui. Né? É que na outra vez tinha as duas câmaras assim bem à minha frente e hoje por questões logísticas e de bateria do telemóvel agora vou estar a olhar para aqui para o Instagram também. Agora, deixa-me ver, vou aqui adicionar a Inês Moura. A Inês Moura, esta extraordinária vocal coach. Obrigado, Inês, pelo, por teres aceito este meu convite. Uh, and now I just realized that I was speaking in Portuguese. <laughs> Because today the broadcast, the episode is in English. I was so, so, so funny. <laughs> I, I was wired. I was wired on the on the, the Portuguese conversation that uh, I was having previously. But now we are live in English, and so we are for the third episode of Greenlight Other Choice uh, live talks and podcast, which is about uh, talking about the human experience and how can each one of us uh, save our life with more simplicity. And I was just in Portuguese, <laughs> thanking you, Inês. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation and for being here today, where we will talk about empower your voice and uh, how can each other discover a little bit more about our voice, how can we develop our voice, and especially uh, for leaders who we are in whatever organization, for leaders who want to create more impact. And this is something real special for me. I delivered uh, uh, quite a few Uh, leadership trainings and the leadership development sessions. And Ines, as a vocal coach for leaders, has done uh, amazing work from what I've been uh, hearing and uh, reading here and there from stories from people that you help, Ines. And uh, thank you very much for being on that path, because that also reminds me, uh, before I'll finish introducing you, uh, I, rem I remembered now uh, the first time that we met. Uh, I believe it was at a, a lecture at the National Congress in the, um, I believe it was the World Day of Voice, the April 16th, and exactly. uh, I was invited to, to give a small lecture, then I think I, I had like 10 minutes or something, but somehow my story developed to be like 20 or 25 minutes, and that was so interesting, I, I was really fun finding my place to express my voice. And I was really having fun. I was really grateful to be there. Um, I remember that. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember that uh, today when I was, okay, when I met, really, uh, you know, the first time that I saw you. And yeah. uh, coincidentally, it was one of the first times that I heard about coaching. So you were like one, one of the first <laughs> okay. speakers about coaching that I ever saw. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. <laughs> Welcome. It was a nice moment. And yes, you were using your voice, you know, freely. You were very mm -hmm. happy. You were <laughs> enjoying the moment. <laughs> it was I really fun. was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was fun. Um, so, uh, Inês, um, I'll, I'll briefly introduce Inês in a very simple uh, way, uh, as we know each other for uh, quite uh, quite a while. And um, Inês has this special thing of discovering uh, the, the authenticity and the characteristics and help people to develop their their voice to to the outcome, to the impact that they really desire to create uh, to their audiences. And that can be on a business meeting, that could be uh, on a, a, a sales with a client, that could be a, a board that is gathering to come to, to, um, to a decision and each side is presenting their, their views on the, on the matter. And whatever it is, even for lectures on the congresses and the other professionals of voice, um, Inês has been uh, developing their, um, her expertise, and particularly, uh, Inês, you, you had an international master with vocal coaching, you have certifications on behavioral patterns, such as the DISC uh, tool, 
Uh, you have, of course, the international coaching certification. You know about uh, also NLP and the micro expressions that we show in the face. And also STL voice training system. And from this and much more that you developed and you learned along, um, across the years, you came with uh, uh, your own unique, I would say, way of helping and coaching and training people to, uh, I would say, connect with their voice and then master their voice in order to deliver a powerful message. Uh, I'm, I'm really inspired by your, your words, voice, power, leadership. And um, at the same time, uh, I really want to, to read this, uh, this sentence that you, that you have on your website. Because uh, it, it really, you know, uh, resonated with me that uh, I will automatically translate it to English. Um, I'm reading the Portuguese, so, but Inês also has, of course, the English <laughs> website. So I don't know why I'm in Portuguese, but any, uh, anyhow. <laughs> so the sentence is, uh, there is no... Uh, uh, calm waiting for us if we want it we will have to build it with our own hands and this is a quote for from the writer the portuguese writer jose saramago and uh, I, I want to start there Inês, before we go elsewhere discovering this empowerment of our voices and how can we do it and how, what can we do with uh, the different types of voices that there are uh, i want to ask you the sentence, the quote from José Saramago, how do you connect with that quote? What does it bring you? Well, uh, first of all, thank you. It was a very nice introduction. You did well your research. <laughs> a very <laughs> a mm. nice way of putting. Um, so what I, what I understand from, from voice, and I, I think I, I see myself more as a facilitator uh, rather than a coach, uh, uh -huh. because I really believe that everyone has uh, the resources they need to find, to choose, to use the, their best voice. So the thing is like, it's like a diamond and you just have to go <laughs> a little bit deeper and then you find uh, the light and you find uh, all the resources that are needed. So when I say that, or when José Saramago said that we need to build our, our path with our own hands, also because this process is really hands-on. So you really, it's not theoretical, it's not how the voice should be, but how is the voice that you want, that you need, that is unique for, for you and, made, and uh, that make you so special and so different and so... Um, so our voice is our brand, it's part of our brand and it's very unique. So instead of trying to uh, be as someone else or someone that I appreciate or I, you know, I like, it's more about finding your voice. And even the, the term finding, uh, I think it's not accurate because we don't need to find something because we didn't lose something. But sometimes it's, you know, it's uh, a little bit uh, un undercover. <laughs> and so uh, we have our habits, our beliefs, our uh, mm -hmm. things that we, we do every day without questioning. And so we, we have our, you know, our natural style. And our voice, sometimes it's just a little bit underneath it. And we just go to step by step and uncover the, the true potential that I find every voice has. So there was, there's no one with the voice, oh, my voice is broken. I, it's nothing that I can do about it, you know? Uh, yeah, that totally makes sense to me. It, it deeply resonates with me. Uh, and I also clearly see the connection with the quote from Saramago uh, in the sense of uh, uh, connect with your voice and uh, totally subscribe what you said it's it, it's not quite like i said about finding our voice the, the voice is already there uh, you, you never you never lost it <laughs> so uh, just i don't know find a way to connect with that discover a little bit more and then 
Uh, I, I really like the the diamond metaphor. Uh, continue to polish a little more to, until you discover a place that uh, that you are as you really want to be, and you are uh, communicating and creating the impact that you really want. Instead of, uh, like I uh, was told many years ago, and uh, sometimes I occasionally still receive some feedback that, oh, João has a voice like this, like, like João has a calm voice, or, or, or sometimes it has a monochordic voice. And uh, yeah, sure, there was some um, uh, conditioning that I received in the past to have the certain type of voice and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I also see myself in other moments that, of course, those people that give me feedback didn't saw me, didn't hear heard my voice on those moments. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that reference. They don't have that uh, scope or that, not, not scope, well, they don't have that length of possibilities that my voice has. Uh, one thing that I've been really, really been passionate about, and uh, uh, I want to ask you how has been your experience with the leaders that you help. Uh, I've been really passionate about discovering more about uh, uh, different voice characters, uh, like uh, when I'm telling a story or I'm telling a metaphor. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm remembering now one of the last times I, I read my book uh, for an audience. Uh, just a short uh, short story from my book. Uh, I got this feedback from someone in the audience. Oh, we got we not only got the reading from the book, but we got like a a, a scenic uh, theatrical uh, reading representation from the story because I was changing my voice according to the characters uh, on the yeah. story. And I guess my question is: sometimes people just uh, freeze in one character. They just freeze in one style of voice. And uh, exactly. I identify with that because that was happening with me uh, along the years. Uh, I was getting feedback and I was uh, getting that notion of, okay, okay, maybe my voice is like this, calm and, and steady. You know, that's and that's some, so interesting, Joel, that you, based sometimes on feedback that you receive from others, you start to believe that you, your voice is only that or mm -hmm. you you understand okay this is this this is who i am and it's not true so we, we don't have to be <laughs> has uh you know that voice you have the calm voice but you also have the happy voice the excited voice you know mm -hmm. so many different voices and it's so interesting because we started to we start to sometimes identify ourselves and the way we speak with our personality and mm -hmm. of course it says a lot about ourselves uh, but it's not something that it's crystallized and you cannot change because it's you know i'm 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 like this so i cannot change and that's a, that is a belief that many people have um so they they don't know that the voice can change and it can change really I, quickly which is very interesting do, do you have like um, a, a, re, a real life example uh i don't know with, of course without naming anyone but do you have a, a life example of that some some moment that you remember yes yes i was just remembering uh i have a client and mm -hmm. she's uh 50 years old so she has a lot of experience she has been using her voice for so many years she's um, a consultant she's a teacher mm -hmm. uh, i would say a consultant for adults um, so and she really hates her voice uh, she told me Ines, my husband loves everything about me except the voice and he's always telling me your voice is annoying you speak so loud <laughs> And he's really, you know, a very uh, sincere. So I really, I don't like my voice. And I always been like this since I was a child. And she would tell me so many stories about people giving feedback about how and her she was. She's a very sweet person. And the voice was really harsh. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we first met and she started to work with me, uh, I remember that in the first session she cried in the, in the end of the session. And she told me, wow, uh, I spent all my life thinking that this is something that I could not change. And I, I now see that's possible, mm. you know. And, you know, when she was like, 
really, you know, with tears in, in her eyes. And she, she said, well, basically, uh, it's good that at least at when I'm 50, that I, I, I managed to find a way to, to change this uh, because I wish it was sooner. Uh, but yeah, it's not too late. So it's not too late to, to like my voice. And one thing that I told her is that you have mm. to be thankful for your voice because she was always there with you. She, uh, your voice was always on your side, was defending you, was... Uh, you know, you 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 have just gone so far with your voice, even if right. it's it, aesthetically, it was not like the way you like it, but still be grateful. <laughs> and we don't thank our voice very often. Do you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, well I, I, I guess I learned how to do it. I learned how to thank my voice and... Uh, um, two things came up to my mind, uh, but, but but first I want to ask to who is watching now, either on Instagram and Facebook, uh, do you identify yourself with this? Meaning, uh, at some point in life, did you believe that you could not change your uh, voice, or do you still believe that you cannot change your voice because I don't know, it's how you've learned to use it, it's how you are used to. Uh, speak in everyday life and um, it's so special for me that feedback that uh, your client gave you uh, that that she really begun at 50 years old uh whoa now i really have this other uh, the words that ca that are coming are positive healthy uh, closer relationship with my voice and I can really thank my voice for all that uh, has been doing for me all over the years and uh, and uh, delivering my my messages and uh, showing my presence and I one thing that I remember uh, about the, the um, thanking my voice uh, I, I guess it was from when I started to um, going deeper with my training and practice of the generative approach that I've been learning from Stephen Gilligan, uh, because there's a lot of that, meaning uh, we have our own voices and we are expressing ourselves all the time. Either we say it or we just keep it to ourselves. And uh, sometimes there, there's a, a delay or there's a, a slight difference between the voice that we connect here and the voice that then we, um, we hear ourselves when we hear ourselves speaking. And uh, uh, the generative approach, and uh, also Gilligan has mentioned it in various different ways, uh, there's this sense of appreciation for each voice that uh, comes up, each voice that is trying to find a way to express. And by this, I mean uh, the connection to those inner characters like sometimes people say that they have the inner critic that is always like oh you could have done better there oh you should use your voice more like that oh you don't have a beauty a, a beautiful voice whatever it is and mm -hmm. i've been discovering with the people that i help that sometimes those voices have different characteristics than uh, the usual voice that the, the the person uses to express verbally to to put the her feelings and thoughts and uh, um, what she wants out there. So I've been find, finding, my, I've been, yeah, I've, I'm on my path of finding my way to make uh, peace with all those voices and to be really, really uh, appreciative and grateful for my voice. Uh, also, I've recently, I guess it was, this was only last week, I, I guess, uh, I was curious enough to, I've been discovering about the polyvagal approach of helping people to have some transformation. And uh, of course, I've been uh, for a long time connected with uh, discovering more about the uh, psychosomatic symptoms that the body expresses. And I believe the voice is clearly one of those <laughs> doors that the body has to, to show hello there's something happening here inside you um it it is exactly you know mm. 
let me just comment on that uh, our voice and that's why it's so fascinating for me how voice is so it's really interesting you know it's not a, only about exercise so do this do that but mm -hmm. really it's uh, your voice tells a lot about all the things that unconsciously are mm -hmm. holding you back or your you know the way your self-esteem your uh, the way your self-confidence uh, mm -hmm. your emotions, your beliefs, what uh, someone said to you when you were a child and you just crystallized that uh, it was like a self-limiting belief. And it's so interesting that, uh, and everything that we learn from our parents and teachers, of course, and our reference, everything impacts our voice. So when we start going deeper in the process of vocal coaching, you don't, you don't only find how to use your voice, but also you discover a lot about yourself. And that's the, the interesting part that I, for me, it's the most interesting part of my work is really helping people to transform their, their, themselves through the voice as you do through, you know, your coaching uh, methodologies, your coaching sessions. It's just mm -hmm. a different <laughs> approach to voice. Um, and that's really interesting. Our voice, it's really a sign that is sometimes shouting, you know, take care of me, take care of these emotions. And one of the messages that I think it's important to, to, to get across today is listen our voice. Not only the inner voice, but the outside, <laughs> the real acoustic yeah. voice that everyone uh, can hear also. Mm -hmm. So pay attention, slow down, listen to your voice and that small, small voice that we call in, uh, intuition. I think mm -hmm. we have that and also the other voice. And it's not normal for you to feel tired, to feel with a lack of emotions, to feel yeah. that your body is tense, your, your voice, it's not being expressive. Uh, you don't have enough confidence. We have to go not only for the symptoms, but to the root cause yeah. of that. Yeah. Not going yeah. into psychology, <laughs> deep psychology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Uh, but uh, not going into that depth of the psychology, understanding the roots and the whys and the what's, what's out there. But I will say, uh, at least from my perspective, to discover what's there. What, what, what are the connections? Yeah, what's there to be? Yeah, <laughs> what's there to be discovered, and yeah. the the person might uh, make other um, other choice because uh, you you were talking about something that is really special for me because that's one of the the um, I don't know even how to how to say it but it's like a strong connection that I, I identify with our work is that you are clearly uh, for me on a path to help and deliver uh, the people to facilitate like you were saying as a facilitator for the, the the person and the leaders to have other choices other ways that they can use their voice instead of being just crystallized mm -hmm. yeah flexibility and um i i, I guess i was remembering two things before which which are um uh our uh, like you said uh, minutes ago our voice can change instantly and one of my uh, latest examples was last year. I was uh, at Zimbra in a training uh, with John Grinder that uh, you, have, you have heard about a little bit also. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I, I, but anyway, moving forward. Uh, basically, I asked uh, two questions because I was thinking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Not unusual. <laughs> Not unusual. Um, and I, I made two questions to John, uh, asking for his feedback, feedback about uh, um, um, some uh, people that I've helped and real, uh, real life uh, scenarios. And I wanted, I wanted his input. I wanted his perspective and other ways that it could be done. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, at some moment, he basically uh, said to myself, "No, you're doing that that way because you're too nice." No. <laughs> he was inviting me to uh, to find my voice of being more firm, more assertive, more challenging uh, in the patterns and in the usual ways that the person was uh, dealing or doing X Y Z, and mm -hmm. um, automatically, uh, and I was uh, I was I could say I was aware my voice began to change because <laughs> it my became darker. Was, 
my, my intention was different and i was getting that feedback that i already had some conscious about it and i knew that was a possibility for me so i noticed that uh, my chin uh, this this is what i'm going with uh, with um, asking your input asking your perspective about that could happen to a leader or you recognize this from your experience so i was holding a, a hand micro uh, and from this microphone in my hand i was asking the question like this you know and as i was uh, receiving the feedback and the and this answer my my voice and my body started to go like this going with the chin to the chest and the, the chest uh, coming back like this and the microphone closer and at the same point the mic was like here and i was like yes i understand i know i can do that i understand <laughs> what you are saying and i just asked another question or reframe the question that i made whatever but my voice began to uh, to have this tonality of going deeper uh with some graves you know with some some more bass uh, and, and strong <laughs> and, and uh, coming, coming from like inside and uh, what else it's also it's increased a little bit in volume but mostly it was like i was getting Mm, I know what you're saying. And uh, there was this so <laughs> funny because the Portuguese um, man that was also on the training, uh, he approached me on the on the, the coffee break, the, just the immediate next one. Oh, you really got, uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, upset with, with that answer that you got? Because did you notice how did your voice change? And I was like, uh, let me rewind. Yeah, I noticed how my voice changed. I know how I, I, I made that shift and I, that reaction happened instantaneously. Uh, so exactly. what you just, let me just say that what you yeah. just described was the, the cycle of uh, emotion, physiology, voice, you know? Uh, mm. So there's a trigger. The trigger could be a comment, could be being on a stage, could be mm -hmm. turning the, the camera on to make a video. And then an emotion, just mm. pops and then your physiology starts to because our emotions of course they live in our body your body starts to transform starts to you know the 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 heart rate is different your breathing is different uh the way you use your you know your shoulders your pelvis your feet it starts to in instantaneously mm. starts to change and mm. then uh that emotion can be reinforced or not but <laughs> sometimes it ha it's it's even more stronger and then your voice as a result of that emotion physiology cycle trigger physiology physiology emotion your voice starts to be different and that's why we we you know when uh, for example if you deal with some anxiety or something that triggers some stress it's very important to know how does your body reacts to that because if you are, for example, in a crisis uh, situation or you are in a stage where you are not um, comfortable, you cannot mm -hmm. leave that moment to, okay, I will handle it. I, 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 I'm just I'm going to improvise. You know, because mm -hmm. of your training and all uh, uh, everything that you, your experience with improvising, that improvising gives uh, a lot of, you, you have to train <laughs> to improvise. So what you just described was, and nice that you were aware of, of that, mm -hmm. because the problem is when that happens, but you are not aware. So you have to see, to, to, to watch a video and to see, oh, my voice really changed. <laughs> That's why nobody likes to see themselves on video. You are, sometimes you are shocked, you are terrified, <laughs> you, you don't like what you see, but it's something that is very yeah. useful. So to be aware and to have another choice. Yeah, so so, so far, and uh, uh, I'll take this moment just to connect with uh, who is watching us. And please, if you have a question, a comment, um, like, for example, I'll show here on Facebook that Rodrigo Luciano is saying that yogis speak about this. Uh, I didn't uh, notice exactly when the Rodrigo what? commented, but I <laughs> imagine this? that it was about the breathing and about yeah. the emotions in the body, because Rodrigo is also connected with yoga, and he's mm -hmm. been on um, a very interesting, uh, I would say, development of his own. So, Rodrigo, thank you for your comment. Uh, uh, we, I agree with this. Uh, I believe that, uh, as you were saying, uh, you were also agreeing with this. And we have here Claudia Ribeiro. Um, I'm going to read uh, the comment to you. <laughs> 
She's saying, you're amazing, Ines. It's incredible. It's incredible to learn with you. And the people are thinking and recognizing your excellent work. <laughs> this person, you know, Claudia, Claudia is, is my friend. And she, she worked with me. Uh -huh. And we were always learning with each other. It's a very special person. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, very special because when people learn um, together, and they can uh, exchange uh, uh, references and learnings. It's so much beautiful when the two voices combine, I believe, can make a different impact. And um, I was uh, uh, about to ask you about uh, being aware, like we were talking. Um, I've been uh, witnessing either from a distance or from stories that get to me or people that I help one-to-one uh, -one or in groups. I've been meeting people that are not aware of uh, all the movements and dynamics and sensations and emotions that are happening happening in their body. Uh, many times, people are not aware even of their posture when they are uh, answering to someone, when they are reacting to some external trigger that you mentioned. It could be a voice, it could be turning on a camera, it could be the start of a meeting, it could be a question uh, that someone brings on. And when people are not aware, um, what will be your uh, recommendations, your invitation um, to help the, the, that person to take a step forward uh, to, as we were talking, listening or starting to listen more uh, our voice? I think when we are entering in the, in the concept of being present. Mm -hmm and being present not only for yourself but also for others mm. and uh, and first my 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 suggestion would be to have the intention of being present so before being present i want to be present in mm -hmm. this moment i want to be aware i want to listen i want to calm down my own thoughts i want to mm. to slow not slow down our speech because i don't agree with it which, mm -hmm. just a side note, but um, to slow down our expectations uh, about what it should be, what the other person, what should I uh, respond to this, or what, what the question that I'm going to ask uh, next, or what uh, if I'm, for example, recording a video or a story for Instagram, or what uh, the other person will think about it. Um, mm -hmm. will, <laughs> so all the judgments, just... Mm -hmm trying to be compassionate and slow down that, you know, sometimes we are just worried about something that never happened and maybe will not never, <laughs> uh, it will never happen. So first having the, intent, the intention of being present mm -hmm. uh, and second notice without judgment. So if you, if you notice that your voice Mm -hmm. uh, change for a reason because you you know you were offended in a meeting you were some some someone made you a question in the you know from the audience that you were not expecting and just notice okay that made me nervous oh i'm i'm feeling you know i i'm feeling uh, different or i'm it made me in insecure or just noticing and then what uh, we both defend what have the choices that i have so when you are aware, you have mm -hmm. that moment of choice. Because if you don't, if you are not aware, the stimulus came and then you respond without ever thinking. Mm -hmm. But when you are present, you are aware of everything that's happening, at least the way you perceive <laughs> what's happening around you, because you always have your perspective. And then have the choice. Is this what I want to feel or what do I want to do, to do differently? And I will give you an example. If you allow, I will tell a short story. Um, one day I was expecting a client in a, in a board meeting. So I was having a training and I was waiting just for the client. Like I was five, min five minutes, 10 minutes waiting. Mm -hmm. And the client just arrived. It was like our third session. Mm -hmm. And we were preparing his presentation for, you know, for the company. And this man just you know enters in the door he was super upset he was almost you know he just dropped her folders in the on the table he was like you know breathing like this he was really aggressive you know and then he sit down 
I, I follow him, so I sit uh, not in front of him, but you know, on the side. And we were on this very big table, mm -hmm. and you started to say, "Ah, because I don't believe in anything of this. I don't need you. I don't need this training. It's just bullshit. I'm so busy. It's like ta 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 ta." It was like I felt. I cannot describe what I felt. I was like, "Please get me out of here." <laughs> I was so. I I really. And never anyone told me, uh, talked to me like, like that, you know, it was really very um, strange. But I notice, so before <laughs> responding in the same, uh, in, in the same way, I just notice, okay, this person is reacting like this. Maybe it doesn't, it really doesn't have anything to do with me. So I will not, I choose not to take it personally because I think we have a good relationship. We just have, you know, two sessions, you know, last week, two weeks ago and everything went fine. So why is this behavior so strange? And so I choose to observe this person is upset. He's, frust he's frustrated. He's with all these, you know, <laughs> uh, these emotions but I will not take it as something to do with me. So I, I use his energy, you know, I just empathize with that. Okay, let me do, what, what do you don't, what are you don't think it's worth in this training? No, we're not going to do that. No, it's just that. So I started to not being aggressive, but starting to make a rapport, <laughs> you know, with the, the frustration and okay yeah i don't agree with that i don't agree that you you know i think you you don't need this because you, you know everything that you want to say and blah 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 and so it was so funny it's just i was seeing this as an observer you know mm -hmm. from like outside and i we we uh, i turned this focus to you know some white uh sheets on the table and he has a, he had a pen so he's you know, okay, you know, show me what you, show me what, what you got. Maybe you don't need me. So just show me your presentation. And, and okay, I know everything that I'm going to do. And he started to work on the presentation. And I just observed. I just, I was just, you know, making some questions. Uh, and he calmed down slowly. We worked on the presentation. He, he did all the session. He didn't went away. He didn't <laughs> beat me <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, and and he made the last session so it was uh, four sessions and mm -hmm. then he was brilliant in the presentation i was so proud you know he was really brilliant so how to observe them something that it's not really of course for me it was not pleasant to start a session like that you know it was i was a bit afraid you know this leader this he's really um experienced so i know he's good and i know mm -hmm. that i'm here just to you know to help him uh, just to polish, as you say, like the diamond, mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. presentation. So it really remember, uh, reminds me the martial arts philosophy. You know, when you just use your opponent's inner energy and you go with it, you, you don't resist. Mm -hmm. So resisting to a process of change, resisting to a transformation, resisting to finding discover your voice is just something that it's going it's <laughs> it, it, it don't go away you know it just it's there waiting for uh, its moment mm -hmm. so yeah. that's why i really like this um, these other areas as uh, such yoga i'm a yoga practitioner uh since uh also martial arts i'm very interested uh about it and other things related to embodiment and also presence, be aware, and take decisions from that. Wow, wow. Beautiful, beautiful sharing, story. beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I seem to remember I saw um, you were on a live a few days ago and you mentioned Aikido. And Aikido yeah. as that process, Aikido as that movement of uh, taking the energy from someone and the. Um, channeling transforming that energy to to another place to another to another hand to another yeah and uh, that also reminds me um two things uh, one when i mentioned the story uh, about that interaction with john grinder uh, i'm really grateful and uh, i re for that interaction and for his feedback and i believe that uh, uh, it was 
the, the way that it was most useful for me, the way that the interaction happened, the way that he uh, gave his perspective, his input, his feedback about the questions that I asked. And when it's useful and when it comes from that place that you are talking, which is mm -hmm. uh, you as a coach and as a vocal coach uh, supporting, facilitating this transformation um, with the, each uh, leader's voice, uh, we are, and I, I, I received that from you, on a, a way so present and available for the process. And we are witnessing and figuring out what we can do and how can we support that um, those that small step of transformation uh, mm -hmm. and that uh, reminds me uh, um, the second thing is you mentioned before about uh, uh, improvising and since i've been uh, almost three years practicing and uh, uh, growing that uh, that passion with uh, th improvisation that theater <laughs> that skill definitely and People, some people are amazed uh, how it uh, actually is and what it implies. And as you said, it's exactly, uh, it implies a lot of practice, a lot of work, a lot of training. And some people, time, some people um, sometimes, uh, I don't know if they forget or they never knew, they le never learned about it. Uh, improvisation is always improvised, the situations and the stories. And what we do as a practice and as a training is not practicing that story is practicing the structures that support the ability to be present and to interact with, um, like you said before, with that uh, inner space, that head space, that allow mm -hmm. us instead of uh, responding to the stimulus without, uh, without, uh, without presence, I will say, we have mm -hmm. that inner place to, oh, interesting, I just received this, Oh, and this is coming out as a message, as to deliver something to the audience, to the, the person in front of us or wherever it might be. So I'm really grateful for what improvisation has been helping me and I've been becoming a better, I would say, human being and also a better professional, uh, better of what I've been doing uh, also for work. And um, uh, I was going, I was remembering another question to, to ask. We are almost ending uh, our conversation today. We have about, uh, I don't know, seven minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, if if you, anyone who is watching right now, if you have a question, just pop in, uh, ask a question here, and we will uh, do our uh, best to answer your question. So please uh, type now some questions that you might have regarding your voice or how to empower uh, your voice or whatever makes sense. And um, I was remembering that um, we all already uh, shared a lot. You shared for me really some precious learnings and thoughts that uh, anyone can take away. Um, you said about uh, the importance of being present and available for what is happening and creating that moment that you are, uh, that you are intentional you know your intention about that moment, about that communication, about that interaction. And that's really powerful because usual, that's also been my experience. Some people might go, oh, what do I want from you? I, I don't know, what, what are people thinking? And uh, how will I be perceived? And uh, oh, no, I'm feeling anxious, no, no. And people can go many places. All over the place. <laughs> yeah they really want to yeah all over the place <laughs> and instead of okay i'm here this is the the context the, the, these are the circumstances and my intention is this i really want to convey this emotion i want to create this impact whatever it might be it's so, and, it's and, so uh, funny because let, let me just uh, make a, a comment on instagram we have we have a comment uh oh. <laughs> with some emojis and exactly what you said it reminds me randomly a conversation that i have with someone <laughs> maybe attending this uh, live or not <laughs> so it's just a coincidence yeah just just a coincidence because we, we share so much but that... i think you could do some vocal coaching some part of, of our train of my training <laughs> you could be <laughs> I, I, I no, could we are super drop, on that. Drop in and uh, and give you a hand on uh, one minute or two <laughs> in that in that training now now joel joel come here you, you say this you are the best uh um, and 
Yeah, yeah, and thank you for that. Uh, I was re with that. I was remembering that uh, one beautiful example, and uh, in order for us to start to bring this conversation to an end, uh, and I, I also have one last question for you before we go. So if you want, stick around. Um, I was on this training, and you know about NLP. You've heard about modeling, and we started the conversation also talking about our unique our. Uh, each one uh, has their own voice and uh, instead of coping uh, and going with uh, uh, turning my voice into other people uh, kind of voice discovering and uh, connecting with our voice and from there we go um, and with modeling uh, on NLP with basically you choose a person that you want to model because you want the outcomes the results, the experience that that person has, and the performance that that person has. And Milton Erickson was like also considered the father of hypnotherapy. Uh, Milton Erickson was one of the first people that were modeled in the beginnings of the beginnings of NLP when it was not even called NLP. And um, I got this story from Gilligan that, um, that uh, when I went to his training, but from of one of uh, Gilligan's participants. So this woman was nearby the beginning of NLP, and she attended, uh, I don't know if it was a seminar, a weekend seminar, with Gilligan. And Gilligan, at that time, uh, during his learning and his uh, starting and his experience, he modeled Milton Erickson, and particularly his voice. Gilligan modeled uh, Erickson's voice. And this woman, this participant, was telling me on a break that uh, she was really enjoying more uh, this class, this seminar, this training with Gilligan in 2014. That was about 30 or 40 years later. So imagine the, the difference, right? The gap. And she was telling, I really enjoy him more now. Because now he has his own voice, he's doing his own style, he's having his own presence. And at that time, when I assisted at that weekend seminar, uh, he really had the voice of Milton Erickson. And she was trying to uh, give an example that Milton Erickson will, will bend like this, and she was looking at a person like that, and she and <laughs> and sometimes the, the words were really um, not well perceived. And so apparently, uh, through the words of this woman, Gilligan had the exact same voice. Uh, she, she's, I guess at some moment she told me, if you would close your eyes and you listen both, you will, could not be able to distinguish. So I was like, wow. wow, wow. I mean, so much is the skill and the ability, the potential that our voice has that we can go to different ways and we can choose different uh, styles and i don't know you can tell a lot more about this mm -hmm. and then yeah. he made the shift and if uh, again he, he didn't found his voice but he somehow connected with the, his own voice and the way that he really wanted to present it himself and that woman recognized that and appreciated that and uh, so, um, that's there are leaders, there are leaders <laughs> that are on that journey i guess of I think what, what is my, what is the modeling, that I want to use? Yes, I think everyone. So, of course, I'm not against modeling. That's the way we learn from our parents. So we started to 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 speak, modeling others, um, our you know, sometimes our cousins, our sister, brother, <laughs> mother, father, and so modeling is a process through we learn. The thing is, and that happens with leaders they model sometimes like an old boss like a leadership style uh, mm -hmm. or they model someone they admire but there's uh, and, and that is the the first um so we are always modeling everyone around us and it's uh i i wrote a, an article about that today on linkedin it's phonetical convergence so or i would call it vocal rapport so we are always modeling other people and that's why that's one way of building our own identity. So it's not wrong to model. The thing is to be stuck on the model. And one of the things that I observe a lot, because I also work with a lot of, I will call them a different kind of, they are leaders also, 
but people that are coaches in our you know in our expertise in our uh, field so i i i worked with a lot of, of coaches in different stages of their career and in the early stages of maybe the first year the first two years i see really i i can hear what is that person reference i know which voice the person is trying to model it mm -hmm. Uh, it could be Brandon Bouchard, it could be Tony Robbins, it could be, you know, other names um, in Portugal or outside, but I know who the person is modeling. And that's funny, and that's really a part of the process, but it's like the first step until you are comfortable with your own voice and you just fix some things that you like in other people and just you build your own stuff and... That's the same process with, with leaders. I think they, they crystallize some things on previous experience and mm -hmm. the world change. <laughs> you need to adapt, adapt your style and to speak in a different way, even now with all this remote communication. And mm -hmm. people have to adapt, they have to, have to evolve. So the way that you were speaking like, you know, five years ago, maybe it's not what your clients need now. Um, so that's exactly. why the training is it's always uh, it's a process and it never stops I'm quoting Tony Robbins <laughs> training never stops and ain't that the beauty of it we are on this human experience and uh, the process never stops we can continue to discover and learn and adapt and adjust according to uh, what's new to what changed to uh, this uh, actual uh, the, this current uh, circ circumstances and so on and uh, well that, that's really a, a beautiful uh, takeaway I, I, I'm guess that that will be one of the golden keys from this conversation because we also talked about listen to your voice really connect inside and listen to your voice and we talked about being present when we are communicating and being intentional about what we really, really want to express and put out there. Uh, and with that is the emotions that we want to bring, the impact that we want to create and so on. And now uh, we are um, talking about this. I'm not sure if the, the, the expression is people forget or they just, I don't know. The, the, and like you said, they, they 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 kind of get stuck with the model that they picked up years ago mm -hmm. or a while ago and they forget like they can choose a new model and choose to discover their voice uh, and how can they transform and develop their voice to really put out the message that they want to to put out there and uh, with all of this um you just mentioned something that is really important for me also uh you uh, besides being a vocal coach for uh, for leaders, you also are the co-founder uh, of um, high performance vocal training, right? Which is a high performance a, vocal coaching. <laughs> vocal coaching training is what you do to prepare uh, speech therapists and coaches and people that are uh, uh, also uh, voice professionals. Uh, yeah, so tell me just uh, high performance vocal coaching. Uh, will be uh, useful for someone in particular who should uh, look you out, who should go to LinkedIn, to Ines Moura, to uh, Facebook, Instagram, Voice Power Leadership, Ines Moura, and High Performance Vocal Coaching. Uh, who should look you up? Uh, high Performance Vocal Coaching is a, is a project really focused on the niche of speech and language therapists and vocal uh, trainers um, that want to uh, have a new methodology in their, uh, in their practice. So mm -hmm. we are talking about people that are either uh, working with voice, but they only work on this uh, health clinical approach, so trying to reverse some pathologies and they are not working with a high performance with really with normal voices and normal people that just want to have a more impact in meetings presentations in on videos on stories on whatever so what i what i learned from my experience is that the methodology of just speech and language therapy like the traditional voice therapy is not enough to mm -hmm. make the, tr the real transformation that people without problems need. So 
combining coaching, communication, voice, NLP techniques, um, and a lot of other techniques really helps this transformation to be more, to be quicker, to be more effective, to be more uh, interesting for the person. Uh, because it's not about voice techniques. It's not about do this and that result. It's much more about that. And that's why me and my partner, Kayla Wurmley, which is, she's Brazilian, and we started mm -hmm. this crazy project of trying to change the world <laughs> one person at a time and uh, to really bring more people into this uh, new methodology, uh, which is a, a specialization uh, for people that already work with voice or want to start to work with voice. I think it's difficult to work sometimes in the area that we really like. And I see lots of speech and language therapists be not being recognized, uh, being, you know, uh, not satisfied with their work. And that's why it's so important to, if you have this passion and you don't have the tools, that's why we create a step-by-step -step process, a methodology that will help you to get there. But it's very niche, wow. a very niche project. So if you know any <laughs> speech and language therapist that wants to work with voice, well, you know, voice professionals, as you said, actors, uh, journalists, um, politicians, coaches, mm -hmm. leaders, this is the approach. At least it's my point of view of the of two things. It's not the only one, and it's not for sure uh, the the last one. So I'm we are pretty happy with this <laughs> and excited with the result. Oh, I see a comment here. Well, on the, I totally I totally recommend that. <laughs> I, I see a comment uh, from uh, a student <laughs> in the Instagram. Uh, from your, your students, yeah. yeah, recommending the yeah. I, I I never went yet. Maybe in the future, who knows? And uh, I totally recognize that and the feedback that I've been reading online, what you have been sharing on Instagram and uh, Facebook and LinkedIn about high performance vocal coaching. Uh, and also about your personal work uh, as Ineos Mora. Uh, and so, again, uh, really appreciated and grateful. I just have one last question before we go and <laughs> before we thank uh, who is ever watching us right now. And thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, and also the people that will watch us later because the videos will be available on uh, IGTV and also on uh, Facebook um, on my uh, page, which is greenlight.joao.pombeiro. And uh, later on, there will also be a, an audio. So whoever out there or whoever you want to recommend in Mora and this conversation, uh, there'll be uh, audio on a podcast that will be available soon. And just follow, follow and uh, keep updated and uh, you will find it. And um, the last question that I have for you, Ines, is uh, what does your voice tell you about if you will have the opportunity to give uh, to a person the green light, the green light to move, the green light to express uh, his voice or her voice, the green light to listen more to the inner voice. If you have the opportunity to give the green light, you will give the green light to what? What will be your green light to give? Um, well, that's a very interesting question as well for... <laughs> oh, thank you very much. What, what pops up in your mind? My intuition was... Mm -hmm. Well, my mind is very complicated. No, I, I was thinking that... First, my intuition uh, told me that what I what I can present someone is well, it's to be present and to be and do you know the sensation of I can see you, I can I'm I'm here for you, I'm present <laughs> for you. So I think the best thing that I can give to someone is my undivided attention. And the the space for the other person to be herself or himself. So for me, it's the best gift that I can really give away is be yourself, uh, learn, improve, develop yourself, discover, choose another thing, choose another path, and but especially uh, be yourself. 
that's super uh it seems a cliche but i think we spend our lives trying to be ourselves so that's a very special journey <laughs> to be in yeah good wow uh, i mean i'm i'll not say anything less but that's it <laughs> That's it. Thank so you. Thank you finished. very much. We, have to, we, have we are to, finished. We have to... Ines, just drop the mic now. Drop Boom. The mic. I'm out. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Ines. Uh, I just want to. There, there was someone that uh, I know also <laughs> that commented <laughs> uh, commented uh, uh, while you were saying these last words, and I will say it because uh, it's not about him. It's not about uh, the two of us. Uh, it's mm -hmm. about what you're saying about speech therapists and. Uh, the, the value or appreciation that <laughs> and he says that uh, he's really grateful for the work of a speech therapist uh, that uh, they have helped the most important person in his life so there's that uh, a public uh, uh, appreciation okay. recognition uh, in the name of all the speech therapist clients and to all the speech therapists out there in the world speech therapist <laughs> helping the people to connect with their voice and like justin is was saying give yourself also undivided attention and that space to to nurture your voice and to really be yourself whatever that means to you uh, and uh, wow uh, now I, ju I just paraphrase your words and i'm like wow <laughs> I want to do more of this. <laughs> so, Ines, to finish, thank you, thank you very much again. Uh, if thank you, you go to the social media and follow Ines, follow uh, uh, her work, go to High Performance Vocal Coaching here on Instagram, here on Facebook, because you're also on Facebook, right? And With High voice. Performance Vocal Coaching. Yes. Uh -huh. So, well, the High Performance Vocal Coaching is if you are interested, you are if you are a speech and language therapist. So exactly. More, and uh, voice power leadership uh it's where currently i i, I share my work and, even, and especially on linkedin too so we you know more cultural on linkedin i will uh it's it's a pleasure to to meet new mm -hmm. uh, new people and to share content and to you know to see how this content content can impact others people's lives so it's it's a joy for me Thank yeah, you, Joel. Definitely. I want to thank. I also want to want to say to thank to here uh, on Instagram everyone that comments. Uh, very <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we were looking like this and that and that, but uh, thank you for your time and to spend this your evening with us. And I hope, Joel, I'm very grateful for our friendship, and I also recommend your work. Uh, and I hope everyone that is following me starts to follow you because your work is so interesting and your approach is really unique so thank you very much thank you thank you very much and have a good night have a good rest <laughs> uh, hope bye to bye. see you again soon bye bye <laughs>